Yes. Good day, your Greek students. I welcome you once again to another session of this e facilitation for AMP 313, a poetry production. Yes, last week, you know my name, you know my name already. My name is Dr. Abayo Misamwe Bankole uh, of the Faculty of Agricultural Sciences, National Open University of Nigeria. Uh, last week, we started very well and very good notes in this e-facilitation. And I know that you also enjoyed uh, our startup. Now, today, we'll be going into another topic, another topic in the uh, facilitation. And today's topic is the basic principles of ashery management of poultry eggs. Oh, I know you will enjoy today's class as well, just like you did last week. All right, without waste of time, let us get to class. Let us get to class. All right, all right. You are welcome. You are welcome to class. You are welcome to class. Now, we are in the class, and uh, we started very well last week, uh, and today we will be going into another topic. We only laid the foundation for this course in last week uh, class, and we also tried to start with the basic building uh, equipment and facilities in poultry production. Now, today we will be going to the topic that says the basic principles of ashery management of poultry eggs. That is what we'll be dealing with today. And I know you will enjoy the class. Oh, you can see this beautiful picture. You are looking there on, the, on your left. Yes, that is a typical uh, ashery laying process. You are seeing the, uh, of course, these are the eggs. From the ashtray. All right, let us move on. Let's move on quickly. Now, introduction. A ashtray is a place where eggs are ashed into chicks, hoes, or kids by artificial means in an incubator. Now, the chicks actually as a business has long been an important part of the poultry industry worldwide. Now, the ashery management begins even before the eggs to be ashed arrive at the ashery. It involves the location of the ashery, the type of equipment, the skilled labor needed in the ashery, and so on and so forth. Now, the ashery manager must know exactly what kinds of materials uh, being put into the setters. The actual process of hashing a chick is a bit complicated as there are many factors affecting it. Now, the environment in which the eggs are incubated and the environmental factors in the setters and ashery provide the proper conditions for embryo uh, development. Now, in the ashery, yeah, no, sorry, if the ashtray is not performing up to the uh, achability standard recommended by the breeder supplier, there is a probability that inadequate ventilation uh, could be the problem. Now, today we have three intended learning outcomes. Now, at the end of today's topic, you are expected uh, to be able to highlight the pertinent requirement for successful hatchery operations. Also, you have to describe how a hatchery environment can be controlled for better achability. And you should also be able to advise an industrious farm where to locate a good hatchery. You have uh, actually practices that you need to adhere to. Let's start with the first. It should be first noted that the health status of the breeder 
breeding floor is very important for the production of high quality hatchery eggs. Also important is in this regard is the mating ratio, which is usually six to seven males to uh, 100 females for the commercial egg production breeder and seven to nine males per 100 females for broiler breeders. The most divisive factor towards achieving optimum result is good management. Oh, this cannot be overemphasized. Management is all it takes in the archery process. Now, the precise information that the archery manager requires for successful archery practices include the health and age of the breeders, that is, the parent floor, the vaccination status, stocking ratio, fumigation program of the heads, and archery equipment, and lastly, the internal interval, sorry, between egg collection and setting. Let's go straight to archery management. I will run through this so fast. Now, the archery is the greatest potential source of the spread of diseases within the poultry industry. The, process, the problem usually starts with contaminated heads which are incubated under due conditions for microbial reproduction. Now, the infection passes to the ash cheek and can then be disseminated. Now, there are some obvious factors which do not only result in a large number of hashes becoming contaminated and infected, but also magnify the risks and render it difficult to eliminate the infection if the infection is established. Egg supply to uh, archery could come from many flock farms with base of different age, health, and production status. Now, this predispose the archery to danger of dangerous infections. Now, let's go straight to factors required for maintaining proper archery hygiene. Number one, you need to maintain a proper handling of fertile eggs. Now, apart from the congenital infection, eggs are normally bacteriologically sterile when laid. Now, any air contamination uh, occurrence is picked up from the external environment between laying and hatching. Eggs are particularly susceptible to infection during the first few hours after laying when they are cooling down. Now, microorganisms picked up on shell surface can quickly penetrate them. Because of this, the environment from the nest box onwards is very, very crucial. You must also know that the nest must be supplied uh, with fresh litter material to keep the eggs as clean as possible. Fatal eggs should be normally collected four to five times uh, on a daily basis so that contamination can be reduced. Now, let's look at the second major factor here, which is X fumigation. X fumigation. Now, you normally should do X fumigation with paraformaldehyde within four hours of laying on the farms. Special cabinets and mini fumigators are available for this purpose. Ideally, dirty X should not be passed into the Ashray. Note this, very important. Now, these eggs are sometimes subjected to bearing treatment, including ineffective washing, which has a dangerous effect on chick quality. After fumigation, eggs must be stored and transported to the ashray in boxes, trays, trolleys, and vehicles, which must have, have been previously sanitized with a heavy duty detergent sanitizer. If possible, discard fiber trays after using ones. Otherwise, ensure they are thoroughly, thoroughly fuming. Let's look at clean setter. Multi-stage setters are usually frequently clean and sanitized 
is they are not emptied for a period of up to two years in an attempt to control the buildup and transfer of infection from exploding eggs. Fogging with disinfectant is a standard practice. Many of the products used for fogging centers are embryo cider and have a very adverse effect on archability. Now, you need to avoid fumigation of eggs in the setters from 24 to 96 hours after setting. You also need to soak setter trays between uses in a pressure washer. Very importantly, scrub setter room floor twice a week, usually uh, using a suitable disinfectant. Now, let's look at appropriate use of detergent sanitizer to clean the archers. Now, to reduce the number of microorganisms in the lime scale on the floors and walls of the archers, as well as the trolleys and other equipment, to an acceptable level of 100 per 16 centimeter, it is vital that the detergent sanitizer used is capable of penetrating any lime scale building and destroying the organisms present. Yes, you also need to do what we call five, area disinfection, area disinfection. Many ashes for uh, the total ashery environment on a daily basis with uh, uh, disinfectants. Um, the products used vary from formalin to pine disinfectants. Now, continuary ammonium type disinfectant is also very suitable for use. Now, other general measures that you can take in maintaining proper harsh hygiene include ensuring that all employees wash hands frequently, especially between operations. You also want to provide wash hand basins, jamicidal soap, and paper towels. Uh, you also want to have protective clothing used uh, to be uh, to prevent uh, damage between operations. You also need to avoid staff movement within the ashtray. Unnecessary movement is not allowed at all in the ashtray. Now, let us go to factors influencing successful archery operations, uh, management of breeder floor and hatching of eggs. Uh, I'll be a bit fast here. Number one, you need to look at the diet and health status of the flock. The diet and health status of the flock. Now, the breeder hen must be kept healthy and provided with a diet adequate to supply the fertile herd with all nutrients necessary. Now, this is not only for normal embryonic development, but also to maintain the offspring in healthy conditions until it consumes adequate feed by itself. It is important to note here that the quality of a breeder ration is more than that for the laying ration. Now, you also need to have a healthy breeder flock, which is best insurance for good quality offspring. What do we mean? Now, breeder hens that are in poor health for any reason frequently either fail to supply the embryo with some vital nutritional factors or perhaps pass some toxins to the eggs. Thus, the arch is poor or the chicks are of poor quality and must be curled. Let's look at preventing internal egg bone diseases. Now, various techniques are used to prevent uh, disease agents from being carried to the offspring. The ideal situation is to have breeders free of all pathogens. Now, such procedures include immunization during the growing period to prevent infection and egg transmission during the laying period. For example, uh, this is used in preventing avian encephalomyelitis. Test and removal of carriers or slaughter of uh, infected flocks uh, can also be used as seen in pleurum and foul typhoid cases. 
Now, uh, you want to look at preventing eggshell pond diseases as well. Now, several procedures are used to overcome shell contamination, which, is, which arises from intestinal content and other environmental sources. Now, control involves preventing shell contamination or destroying the organism before they penetrate the shell. This should be achieved through, number one, producing clean action eggs, three, two, fumigation, and three, watching in water of 38 degrees Celsius or in liquid sterilization using sodium pentachlorophenates. Now, let's look briefly at sighting of the ashray. Now, it is fundamental that the ashtray should be located away from the existing farms or farmhouses and, odd, and uh, other densely populated areas of human settlement. Now, there should be easy supply of electricity, hygienic water, and open air. Ashtray must be well connected with the roads and air production centers. The immediate surrounding of the ashtray should be properly cleaned and kept at Chaining at all times. Ashy waste should be properly disposed of and the equipment well sanitized. Let's look at the building, the ashy building. The dimension of the ashy building will depend on the number and size of the machine to be accommodated, which in turn will depend on the number of chicks required to be ashed at a point in time. Now, the layout plan, however, must meet basic ashtray premises plan, which include one, you need to have the egg receiving room. Now, this egg receiving room should be located at the outset, outset of the ashtray premises. This is very, very important. Please note, take note of this. The eggs from breeder farm may be received here preferably through the window and the person bringing them should not be allowed to enter the ashtray building. Number two, the disinfection, fumigation, and holding room. This is also very, very important. Fumigation room should be connected to the egg receiving room, and after disinfection, fumigation eggs may be shifted to the cold room or holding room. Now, the egg holding room should be connected to the fumigation room. Number three, the egg setting room. Now, this room should be quite special so that sufficient working space furnished with work ben benches, it is available for the workers to do uh, the job effectively. Besides, accommodating the required number of incubators. Number four is the candling room. Evidently, the candling chamber should be dark and connected to the exiting as well as action rooms. Now, it should be equipped with fertility testing lamps or mass candle. The eggs are candled for internal egg quality prior to loading in the incubators located in the setting room. Let's go straight to the action room. The action room is very very important now the archers should preferably be kept in a separate room this part of the building should specifically be ideally clean and well ventilated for the production of large number of healthy chicks number six is the chick sexing room now this room may be attached to action room as well as the chick holding room the room should be clocked with appropriate light source between 200 watt ele electric bulb uh, in a reflective uh, place is essential for chick sexing. Other necessary apartments in the ashtray building include the chick holding and supply room, the store or office, and the general lobby. Now, let's quickly, quickly look at uh, how to provide the best searching environment. There are certain things you need to take note of. Number one out of this is temperature. Temperature. The temperature on the 28th and 21st day of 
arching should be between 27.2 Celsius to 31, I mean 36.1 degrees Celsius in the arching compartment. The thermometer should be checked occasionally for accuracy. Number two, relative humidity. Now, during this time, it is the time stated above the 28th and 21st day of arching. Uh, the humidity must be increased to about 75% to achieve the following. To help the cheeks break through the shell membrane, prevent the beak of the cheeks from sticking to the shell, and to stop the cheek from drying out. Now, let's look at ventilation. This is another very important factor for best action environment. Now, ventilation. Only through trial and error can the correct amount of ventilation be determined through experimentation. However, the following are some helpful figures. In the archer, you need 0.6 to 1 degree of carbon dioxide and 20 to 21% uh, oxygen. In the room, you need 0.04 to 0.05% carbon dioxide and 20.8% to 21% uh, oxygen. Let's look at turning of the heads. In the archer, the eggs are not usually turned in order to avoid any disturbance to the growing chick. Positioning of the heads is another important factor for the best arching environment. And uh, in this Regard the head should be trained with the large end up because in nature the head of the chick develops in the large end of the egg near the air cell. The reversed positioning will reduce achability by 30 to 40 percent. Now, in summary, what have we uh, uh, talked about today? We have been able to examine the ashu management practices that will enhance successful achability, siting of the ashery, and the layout plan of ashery buildings. We also discuss handling and management of achability heads in the archer. Please, please, uh, this is the end of today's class, but I will want you as I said last week, to always visit the virtual learning environment uh, and also to engage in the discussion forum that will be available maximum by Thursday. Thursday, always we will be having discussion forum. Please ensure you engage in this. Uh, I will once again meet to you. I say bye to meet in the next class. Bye bye.